So this is an example with some data set. In this problem, uh, they run a normalized cut. This uh, data set contains 70 points. This is how the affinity matrix or similarity matrix uh, looked before the before solving the optimization problem. And this is once we have computed the second eigenvector and we have ordered uh, the points from the uh, smallest to the largest eigenvalue. And you can see here that there are two blocks. Each of these blocks define a group of points. So from point one to point more or less 14, you see that all these belong to one group. And here you can see these points and the corresponding value in the uh, vector in the f in the second uh, smallest eigenvector and all those points that are above zero will be considered to be part of the other group here you can see that the solution was not uh, let's say perfect you have three or two points that were considered uh, as belonging to the red group even when they had values larger than zero and you can see this here that this is not like perfectly defined there are some values here that are different to zero when the two groups are perfectly disconnected you see here perfect squares of, of values okay. so how to partition a graph into k clusters so we have seen the case with two clusters how can we solve this when we have more than two clusters we have k clusters so but it, what you do is first you compute the similarity matrix w here we are considering k clusters so we build the similarity graph we compute the first k eigenvectors we are going to call this v1 up to vk um, you can apply this to the unnormalized version of to the normalized version of the Laplacian there are uh, actually many ways to to run spectral clustering when you change the uh, function that you want to minimize like in this case is the normalized uh, cut you at that moment you 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 have a different problem and you need to devise a, a different algorithm and there are many uh, variations of, of these problems so in this case we're talking about the normalized cut um, then we build the matrix v of size n by k where n is again the number of points and k is the number of eigenvectors or clusters that we think could be in existing in this data set and this is the matrix we're talking about so each row will be an eigenvector so if we are considering that uh, there are possibly three clusters we will compute three eigenvectors and since we have uh, n data points these eigenvectors are of size n okay so by doing this we are doing some dimensionality reduction because we have reduced our original matrix n by n to a matrix m by k okay. so what you do now at this point once you have generated this matrix is that now you consider each of the points like for example this is one point you will consider it to be a point in a or a vector in dimension 3 defined by these three values v11 v12 and v13 okay so now this point 
uh, will be in a three-dimensional space. If we were talking about, for example, five clusters, then we would have here V4 and V5, and then each point will be sent to a five-dimensional space. Okay. So once you have considered each of these points as a vector in dimension three, you can run, for example, k-means on these points in dimension three. And the problem now, hopefully, after applying or computing these eigenvectors, should be uh, much simpler to solve in this uh, new uh, dimensional space. So here is an example. Here, uh, what you see here is the histogram of numbers that were generated. Numbers uh, were generated around the number two. Other uh, group of points were generated around number four. Another group of points were generated around number six. And one more around number eight. Okay. And um, they uh, run the, the algorithm, the steps that we saw before, and they uh, computed the first four uh, eigenvectors. So these uh, plots that you see here are the uh, eigenvectors. You see that for in the first eigenvector, all the uh, values are the same. So the first eigenvector is not giving us much enough information to discriminate, or to make the groups. Uh, the eigenvector two, remember that here we are considering the zero as a threshold. We see that for numbers um, uh, starting at five to eight, they are given, uh, this eigenvector is given a negative number. So all these numbers will be classified as belonging to one group. And all the, the numbers that are before five, more or less, are uh, our eigenvector contains positive values. So this will belong to, to another group. So this is like a first cut. We, we call this a first cut, that this eigenvector two is, is dividing our points in two sets. If we check the third eigenvector, we see that uh, for values or numbers in, in between four and six, they, the eigenvector is assigned in negative numbers. So it is dividing uh, basically the, um, the set in, in, uh, in two, two groups. And finally, the the last uh, eigenvector is uh, defining uh, the each of the uh, clusters, like numbers around two, like to be positive, like so belonging to one group, numbers around four to belong to another group since they are negatives, numbers around six they are it is assigning a, a, another cluster positive and uh, numbers around eight it is uh, assigning negative numbers so what is going on when we we are doing this why why does it work so uh, as i said these points once you have generated the uh, eigenvectors and you start considering each point as uh, vectors in some dimension, like in this example, dimension three. What we're doing is that we are projecting our original points into a, a lower dimensional space. So in this example, our original points are in dimension two and we are sending them to dimension three. So this is not actually going to a lower dimension, but this is just an example. Usually you will have points in a higher dimension, let's say dimension 10 or dimension 20. 
and then you will project them to a dimension three. So usually when you apply this, you are reducing the dimensions. And once you have projected the data, the points that belong to the same group will be very close in this uh, reduced dimensional space. So in this case, all the points that are red were projected to the same point up here. And the same happened with points uh, greens and, and also with blue points. They were all sent to the same uh, point in this three-dimensional space. So this is very, very simple, very simple to, to solve this clustering. So let's try to understand a bit uh, the information provided by the Laplacian matrix once we have ordered it using the eigenvectors and also what information the eigenvectors are providing. So if the graph is connected, uh, it con connected means that the points are not like perfectly uh, grouped in, in clouds. If that is the case, uh, the first Laplacian eigenvector is going to be constant. So you will have in the first vector the same values. Usually this, all of them are going to be one. But if the graph is disconnected, but there are k connected components, the Laplacian will have this block uh, diagonal in the diagonal okay where each of the blocks will tell you that these nodes belong to a specific cluster okay and if you look at the eigenvectors that you will create or you will calculate from this Laplacian you will see eigenvectors like in this case the first three eigenvectors for this uh, data set here or here that they will be similar in, in terms of the Laplace and the eigenvectors you will see ones and zeros in other places ones for all the points in this block and zero other places so by looking at the Laplace and one it, is, it has been ordered you can you can uh, see how many clusters are in your in your data set so is all hope lost if clusters don't correspond to connected components of graph? Well, no. If clusters are connected loosely, so you have numbers outside the main diagonal, like in this case, you don't have zero, zero here and zero, zero, but you have some other numbers. Uh, what you get is that in the first, the, the eigenvector, uh, will show the same number so it is not going to give you much information to discriminate or to create the, the, the uh, clusters but in the second uh, eigenvector you will see values that are positive and values that are negatives and this is going to allow you to say okay all these points here negatives belong to one group and all these that are positive belong to two groups okay If you have like a perfect block uh, weight matrix like this case, one, one, ones and zeros, where each block corresponds to a specific cloud of points, and this is a, a case of disconnected graph, we, we call this disconnected because in the real data set they are like very easily and very uh, perfect separated uh, bunch of groups. You will see that the first uh, eigenvector will contain values like this and the second eigenvector will contain values like this zero zeros and something different to zero and in this case this has to be normalized to, to have the unit norm and if you have uh, like some perturbations like values instead of zero something different then the first vector 
is not going to provide you the first eigenvector is not going to provide enough information for the clustering but the second one will contain the information so if we focus on these points like in the general case with k clusters and we consider these two values as uh, the new representation of the first point and we plot it you will see that plots uh, this this uh, projected points that belong to the same red group will be very close and uh, the other two points belonging to the other group will be also very close and it doesn't matter of course if you uh, change the order of the points because in the end what we are computing is the the eigenvectors so even if you change the order of the points you you will end up with the same solution so is all hope lost if clauses don't correspond to the connected components of graph no if clauses are connected loosely as we have seen small off block diagonal entries so numbers that are very close to zero but not zero then the, the first Laplacian even when it contains all ones or it contains the same constant number the second eigenvector is going to give you the first cut if you're talking about binary or two, two groups only the second eigenvector is, is giving you the, the first and the final cut okay and if you are uh, considering more than two clusters the next eigenvectors are going to finally give you the solution so you will need to consider eigenvector 2 up to eigenvector k plus 1 where k is the number of clusters that you are looking for so what is the performance of expected clustering compared to k-means so applying k-means to Laplacian eigenvectors allows us to find cluster with non-convex boundaries so what is this non-convex boundaries? Um, here we are talking about convex or non-convex sets of points. So a set of points is considered to be convex if you take any two points in that set and you uh, join them by a line you draw a line between these two points for example this one here and this one here and any point that you can find on this line belongs to the same group so these two groups are considered convex because you you can have that result okay but in this case we have a set of, or two set of points that are non-convex because if you select for example this point and this point over here that both belong to the same large uh, circle and you draw a line between these two points you will find points that are not uh, in the same set so this is a non-convex uh, set of points so like the typical uh, cluster that we imagine is something like these clouds of points that are convex so when we're talking about like the typical uh, convex uh, bounded sets both k-means and spectral clustering and you can also say mixture of gaussians and also um, self-organizing maps for example have a, a good performance also spectral clustering In this case we are comparing k-means and spectral clustering both methods have a very good performance but when you consider non-convex sets like in this case spectral clustering is superior as we can see in the next slide like here for example uh, this would be a solution by k-means where uh, of course this this is a, a wrong uh, a clustering scheme here but for spectral clustering since the core uh, optimization problem in spectral clustering is this concept of neighborhood or connectivity 
uh, for spectra cluster this is very easy to, to solve so applying k-means to Laplacian eigenvectors allows us to find cluster with non-convex boundaries so here is a, uh, our data set uh, if we apply spectra clustering to this we will get the similarity matrix once we have ordered it by the eigenvectors in this way so we will see a very connected uh, set of points and another one here and here you can make your final uh, clustering considering the second eigenvector and you will see that positions from 0 to 20 will have uh, values that are negative below 0 and from values uh, or points 21 to 100 will have a positive uh, value in the eigenvector and this is what you can see also here going from 0 to 100 so uh, these uh, are examples that can be solved very easily in this case we're talking about four clusters and here we are talking about eight clusters that could be solved uh, very easily using spectral clustering and this is like it could be a quite challenging for k-means for example here is another example where the, the data set here is the same in both sides but here they apply the spectral clustering considering three clusters and this is the result and this is the result when they say okay let's find here only two clusters so even in this case uh, it, it makes sense the, the final solution of, of the, uh, the spectral clustering algorithm so one question here could be okay um, I have more than two clusters but how can I know how many eigenvectors I, I need to consider in my final solution so there's a very good uh, hint that you can follow which is uh, you can order the eigenvalues remember that each eigenvector will have an eigenvalue you can order the eigenvalues from the smallest to the largest one and you can uh, compute or calculate the what they call here the delta k which is basically the difference the absolute value of the difference between one eigenvalue and the next one or the previous one so in the moment when or at the moment when you find a jump or a gap between one of the eigenvectors to the next one that is a very good hint that you should stop uh, considering more eigenvectors like in this case you see how the eigenvalues are increasing and from the eigenvalue 4 to 5 there's a gap a large gap this is telling you that you don't need more than four eigenvalues so you can take the first four eigenvectors and uh, this was uh, run for this uh, data set so what problems you can find here so this is not perfect this there there is no perfect method for clustering so first is that you need to check for the clusters you can try different case depending on the values in the previous example it was like very clear that which one of the uh, or how many eigenvectors you, you need to consider but there could be problems in which that is not like very evident uh, the other thing is that you need to choose uh, the similarity kernel in this case we're talking about Gaussian kernel but it, you could use different kernels or different functions and each function will have possibly different parameters like in Gaussian kernels you need to choose uh, the best sigma and choosing a wrong parameter a non-optimal parameter for your kernel or your function could uh, lead to bad solutions like in this example uh, with a good similarity measure you can have a very nicely defined two cluster uh, solution
but for the same data set with a with the wrong uh, or a poor similarity measure you can have something like this where it is practically impossible to 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 see if you have two or more groups so no no method is perfect and and you need uh, always to run experiments with different parameters to see what is the best best solution so in summary uh, algorithms that cluster points using eigenvectors and matrices derived from data this is what we call spectral clustering so you you have your points you define a graph a similarity measure compute the, the uh, this uh, weight matrix and compute the eigenvectors from, from the Laplacian of this uh, similarity matrix. That's spectral clustering. There are many ways to, to run this. We have seen like the standard one or the basic one, but there are many ways to compute these eigenvectors. Uh, this is useful for non-convex sets, as we have seen. It allows you, allows you to uh, to project your data set into a lower dimension space where this is uh, more or this is easier to, to solve the, the clustering and as I mentioned there is a variety of methods that use eigenvectors so for normalized or normalized Laplacian you can uh, differ how to derive clusters from the eigenvectors and there are many ways to try to improve the solutions and uh, in terms of, of practicality, this is very successful. You can, I mean, it's not that uh, complicated to compute these uh, eigenvectors if the, the, the matrix or the data set is not uh, extraordinarily large. So it's empirically, it, it, it is very successful. Okay, guys, so this is all about spectral clustering we're going to talk about. Um, I hope this is useful. Thank you, and talk to you later. Bye.